What's up guys? So uh, this week, uh, actually last week, GMC sent us a brand new 2022 AT4X GMC Sierra um, 1500. So if you guys don't already know, I've been driving a 2019 Duramax for the last couple years. We have a slew of 1500 uh, GMCs in the fleet and I've been back and forth about upgrading my truck and just have been trying to decide if I want to stick with a 2500 or if I want to go to the 1500. And when GMC reached out to us and said, hey, do you want to check out the new AT4X? I said, absolutely. I got to drive it around for a week. Uh, and I just wanted to give you some of my thoughts and ultimately what my decision is going to be with whether I'm going to stick with the 1500 or go back to a 2500. So first and foremost, the ride is definitely better than my 2500. The 2500 is sitting on at more heavy duty chassis, it does have a little bit more of a rough ride. So this thing definitely rides a lot nicer. Uh, this truck is actually equipped with a 6.2 V8. The get up and go, it's definitely a little bit faster than my Duramax, um, but I do really love the power behind a diesel. So I will say that is no slow engine. The power in this thing is really great. I have to have a crew cab. I have three little kids. Uh, that most of them, actually all of them are in car seats right now. So the cab has to be a crew cab. And I did notice that on this truck, the newer trucks, the cab is a lot bigger. If I jump in here, uh, this is actually set pretty far back. I'm about six feet tall and I still have plenty of room in front of me. So I know that my youngest daughter, I can have that car seat flipped around even behind me, uh, which I usually put behind that seat just so it's not pu pushed up against me. A ton of room back here huge benefit. The interior is also really nice. Uh, the, the stitching between the red and the white stitching is awesome. I really love that. I'm, I usually always go with the black leather interior. Uh, so this would absolutely be the my choice. Uh, red wouldn't be my choice on the outside, though I do actually really like the color. On the front or in the front of the truck, what I really actually love, there's actually a few features I want to talk about. <laughs> Number one, the big screen up here. So if I turn it on, you get a big screen uh, right to the right of the steering wheel here. One thing that they upgraded that I noticed from my other truck is that Apple Play. So I have an iPhone and when I'm cruising down the road, in order for me to connect to Apple Play, uh, I have to be tethered to it, meaning I need a cable tied into my aux, my aux port in, inside my console. And that allows me to run GPS. This truck doesn't, everything is done right over Bluetooth, which is actually super nice. Uh, and in my 2019, my phone would actually typically sit up here and this is a charging pad. Uh, they changed it this year. I'm not entirely sure why, again, this is all my opinion on these things, but number one, I think a lot of people probably drop keys up here and, and then it defeats the purpose of having the charging pad. So they actually tuck the charging pad here. So if I grab my phone, Mind you, it's it's cracked. I slide my phone in there. Now it's gonna it's gonna charge when I'm driving. Again, it's connected to Apple Play without me tethering it. Um, and I think that one of the nice things about tucking the phone in down here is also that I'm not prone to looking at it. So if I'm getting notifications, I'm not playing with it. It's kind of tucked in, out of sight, out of mind. But it's charging and still allows me to drop miscellaneous things here up on top of the console. They also switch to a console shifter. I'm not entirely sold on it. Uh, it's getting a little bit, I have to get used to it probably because I'm so used to uh, up on the column. Uh, um, but it is nice. It, it's pretty uh, luxurious feeling to, to, be, to be honest. I love the black headliner. Mine has a lighter color headliner. It does feel more sporty with the black. And of course, every truck I have has to have a sunroof. There's actually a funny story about that. I ordered a truck at one point and it didn't have one. And then they told me that they were going to put a factory, a factory one in uh, and they cut in an aftermarket one and it was a, a whole debacle. Um, that, that triple beep let me know that I left the keys in the inside. Since you don't have the keys inside the column, it's just a push button start. Uh, that's a nice feature to let you know, hey, don't, you know, you left your keys in the truck. Uh, oftentimes they're just in my work bag. Uh, so now I know if I'm going to leave them in the truck and, and they're not coming with me. Um, looping around, obviously get the more off-road tires and the black wheels. They have the double tailgate on this new truck. So this upper button here is going to unlock the, the, the mini tailgate. 
that's what I'm gonna call it, the mini upper tailgate. Um, so if you have stuff in the truck, say a, a long ladder or maybe a, a, a stack of two by fours, you don't have to put the whole tailgate down nor, you have to re- nor do you have to rest it up on top. Uh, but it's also a, a good platform. We've used it in the past where we set up the computer and I can be on the job site checking over um, so do- documents on the computer and maybe we're having a site, a site meeting. You close that and you press the other button and then the big one. It's also nice that it's, uh, it's a soft close or soft open. It doesn't slam down, uh, which is a nice feature. I will say that I accidentally left it unlocked uh, earlier uh, and the thing actually fell on me when I was driving and I didn't hear it. So I only noticed it when I got out to get fuel that this had dropped down. Um, bed liner, of course. Doug just corrected me. Uh, this folds down as a step all the way. I, I did not know that. Uh, and I also didn't know that it has a uh, kicker audio back here with a USB and an aux import, import, input. Uh, so if you're tailgating and want some music back here, everything is located back here pretty badass uh, but it also works as a nice step to get up into the truck um, thankfully I, I think I can hop up to a regular tailgate but maybe as I get older it's gonna be a, nicer to have those those steps going into the truck uh, and for anyone that is wondering if these steps are code compliant probably not but it is in a house and we didn't frame them and they're just fine to get up into the bed so yeah, another feature that I almost glazed over. A couple things that on, on my other truck that I typically will do is a, a secure tonal cover. So it looks like a soft cover, but it actually has an aluminum profile underneath it to keep things secure and also locks. So when, once the tailgate's locked, you can't open that. And I've been putting the Magnum racks on the back of our truck. Um, just, it's nice to have, but it's also every once in a while I have to grab a ladder uh, and toss it on top of the truck. So it would make sense for me to do something similar. All in all, the, the, I really do like this truck. And I actually told my wife yesterday that I'm considering stepping down to a 1500 because I, I like it so much. Uh, the upgraded front end is really nice too. Um, it's, it, it's big, it's, it's in your face. There's cameras everywhere. You got a camera here. You actually have a camera here on the on the mirror you have two up on the brake light up here and then two on the tailgate i believe it really gives you that 360 view so when you're backing in and out of spots and when you're 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 actually going around a corner or if you just want to see what's in the bed of your truck all of that is an option on the camera console uh within the dash but like like i was saying i had said to my wife the other day i'm like i might actually consider going down to a 1500 and i had posted on instagram a bunch of you guys were like oh get the 1500 with the diesel in it And I looked into that, Uh, the mileage seems fantastic, 25 to 30 miles to the gallon. This one doesn't get as great, Um, probably my driving habits, but I was averaging somewhere around 15, Uh, but I am in and out of the city as well as highway. Uh, And I do a lot of driving. So, you know, I do love the power in this thing and I do love how quick it is, Um, but I don't think I would go gas if I were to buy a 1500, I would absolutely consider that that smaller Duramax motor in the 1500 trucks. Um, But ultimately my decision, I've decided to go with a 2500 Duramax, um, mainly because I don't tow a lot, but when I do tow, it's typically a really heavy load. Um, For instance, just a couple weeks ago, I had a 10,000 pound trailer on, I'm sorry, uh, 12,000 pound trailer, uh, and I had towed it with the uh, the 2019, and it did did great. And if I was stepping down to a 1500, even with the smaller Duramax, I just don't feel as though I would feel as confident going down the road without that big heavy duty truck. So while I don't uh, use the towing capacity or the heavy duty chassis uh, as much, I do think that is the best decision for me. And frankly, at the end of the day, both would be a great uh, option. It's just really personal preference. Plus I love the sound of that Duramax.